<clears throat> Are you guys able to hear me? Good morning, Rosa. Yes. Procurement. Good morning. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, Janice had scheduled these uh, uh, this webinar for the requisition approval process. Uh, we, as you all know, or you might not know, but uh, we are uh, been working on a project uh, for um, recruiting applicants and uh, for, for the past few months and we are now ready to roll this project, uh, roll this out uh, to, um, uh, to the live environment and the first step of basically cre recruiting any candidate is creating requisitions so what we've done is we've created a requisition process within JD Edwards where users uh, would be able to create requisitions in the system and that requisition is then going to be routed to their supervisor for approval and once it's routed uh, for uh, once it's approved it is routed to the recruiters to open uh, uh, to create postings based on the requisition created and that that requisition is then posted uh, on the courier web website for applicants to apply. So we are we are going to go through a uh, uh, the process of creating a requisitions. Uh, we also have training material that would uh, we will be sending out uh, after the meeting. Uh, and any any questions that are asked, we will address those questions in those training documents as well. Uh, so just to start off, let me uh, let me show you a, a workflow that we have for the uh, for the requisition process. Uh, so. Basically, uh, this is the workflow that we have that we've created in JD Edwards. Is if a requisition, when a requisition is created in the system, uh, it is routed to the uh, uh, to uh, the uh, the hiring manager of uh, the person who is creating the requisition. If it is a non-budgeted uh, position the requisition is first approved by the hiring manager and then it is also uh, approved uh, by uh, the CFO and the requisition approval process uh, you don't really need to log into JD Edwards to approve requisition you get an email for the requisition um, approval link in, the, in an email and you could click that link and you should be able to approve the requisition either from a mobile device as well as from a um, uh, uh, from your own computer so you don't really have to be on ISS network to create the requisition uh, or approve the uh, actually to create the requisition you have to be in JD Edwards but to approve the requisition you don't really have to be in JD you could do it just from your phone uh, so what I'll do is I'll show you a process um, of creating a requisition. Uh, so you would go into JD Edwards, log into JD Edwards, uh, go into human resources, e recruit, and you would have a salaried requisition menu. Uh, you would click on that and you would click add, create a requisition. Over here, Home business unit uh, where the, uh, the uh, where the employee would be working. You would enter the job type uh, that is going to be assigned to this to this uh, employee that you're uh, trying to recruit. You could select that from a list over here. Uh, let's pick, uh, used to be one. Oh. These are all of the job types that are currently in JDE. <clears throat> so it's important when you're choosing these, you're choosing the right job types. <clears throat> Correct. 
And over here, you would put in the expected salary for a business application specialist. Over here, you would put in the um, your address book number. And this is important uh, that you put in your address book number because the requisition is going to be routed based on uh, this this requested by address uh, address book number. So, um, uh, uh, whoever the supervisor for uh, for instance, I'm use, using Cyril as the uh, as the requester. So, whoever the uh, supervisor for Cyril is in the employee uh, employee master, they would receive this requisition to prove. Uh, requisition types uh, there are three requisition types that will actually be used um, which is new budgeted new non budgeted and replacement so if you use new budgeted or replacement it is only routed it only requires one level of approval which is your direct supervisor and if you choose new non budgeted then it also requires a second level of approval um, uh, to move forward uh, uh, before any posting could be created on the on the web application on the uh, ISS career web application so we would use in this case we would use replacement um, over here the job category these are the job categories that that this job would be posted under on the web application uh, so it is important uh, since this is a IT uh, job, we would select IT over here. But it is also important that you 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 know exactly. Um, and I think Janice, you can provide the details on what in what for what jobs the uh, which category should be used. So this is actually tied to how it will show up on the career page of the website. So when someone logs into ISS's website and goes to the career page, they'll be able to search by one of these requisition types. So if they're looking for HR jobs, they can click on HR and it'll show them a list of open HR jobs. So if you mistakenly put the wrong requisition type or, sorry, job category, they will never find your opening if they are looking for IT and you mistakenly clicked on HR they won't see it so it's really important that you're putting the right job category here because in the workflow this all f flows through JDE and gets uploaded to the career site okay <clears throat> moving forward here Evergreen, uh, this is basically mostly used for field where they have, you're constantly hiring for employees for a certain job, uh, therefore they want this requisition to remain open um, uh, until it is manually closed. Uh, so if you, if you choose Evergreen, yes, that means this requisition, even after it is filled, it will remain open, the posting will remain open on the web application. But if you choose no, this this requisition will get closed after it has been filled, um, and it goes by headcount uh, actually. So it is important to define the headcount. So if you're looking for five business specialists, then you would put put in five over here. So once all the five positions uh, have been have been filled you have the five headcounts for that position this requisition will automatically close so it is also important that you select the correct headcount uh, you would define if this is an employment status uh, a full-time position part-time position <clears throat> seasonal position uh, those kind of details would have to be identified over here uh, you need to identify if it's a union non-union employee this is mostly used for field um, so, uh, but, but this is what this field basically is for. 
the task code this is the epay task code you can you can pick which task code would be assigned to this employee and if you pick this if you, it's important you pick this code correctly because this is what is going to get attached to the employee record when they get hired uh, so it is very important you pick the correct task code um, job perform business unit this is the business unit which where the employee will actually be working uh, this is different for field because uh, they, they might belong to a district but their job site is uh, at some other location therefore uh, this is basically the job site number what they will be working uh, but in in, in, in uh, I believe in the case of um, uh, s uh, recruiting salaried or uh, professional staff you would uh, uh, you would need to put in uh, it, it will be the same as the home business unit so but, and the job title this is the job title that would be posted online uh, on the web application so so in in this section if you want to actually advertise it as a different title that that's in JDE this is where you would be able to type that in so if you're looking for a finance um, analyst but you're looking for a senior and that's not really in JDE you could type senior business analyst here I just want to caution you that whatever you put here however it's typed is what shows up on the um, career page so you have to make sure you double and triple check spelling and everything else because once it's approved you cannot go back in and change this so it's really important to check spelling on it okay. good point Janice uh, and then uh, you could also put in the justification if need uh, if required um, uh, for um, to, to record on the requisition uh, to keep a to uh, keep a track of history why this requisition has been created ready uh, you can submit this for approval and at this point uh, this gets routed to your supervisor uh, to approve the requisition so as a, a as a best practice I would probably if I were you as I would send an email to your supervisor letting them know you just submitted it and to look for the email <clears throat> from the system and ask them to go ahead and approve it otherwise if they don't notice it they are not going to approve it and it could get stuck there because nothing happens with the job posting or anything until it's approved so I would just reach out and say hey I I just sent through a a um, a requisition to replace whoever please look for the email and select approve <clears throat> and as Raza had said earlier they can do it from a phone or a tablet they don't actually have to be logged into the network yes that is correct so this is the email that uh, you would get uh, as a supervisor um, which would have all the details for what kind of a requisition it is if it's a salaried requisition uh, what's the expected salary uh, is it uh, is it a replacement requisition um, what job category it is uh, justification of need uh, as I had put in demo and training you could add notes over here so the supervisor know knows why you're actually approving this requisition and then the supervisor would click on this link and they would see this and as I said 
you don't really have to be logged into JD Edwards to do this. Uh, and once you would approve, um, go back in here. Uh, so you see this is in waiting status right now. And once it would be approved, Once it has been approved, you would see that the status will now change to approved. And uh, these are the notes that the supervisor put in approved by level one. Those are also going to be available uh, for you uh, to look at. And everything is getting also recorded in history over here. So uh, this was in waiting status. Uh, this is uh, this is the approver who approved it, and uh, so this is all going to get recorded in the system. Any questions at this point? I have a question. Yes. So the workflow at the beginning had the hiring manager approving it, which I think is what you just did to show us how that looks. But then it also needs another level at the CFO. Still, is that correct? Yes. So seeing approved here, we may think, good, it should be posted in any day now, we're good, but we're really not yet, right? We're not quite there? Well, the CFO only needs to approve if it is a new non-budgeted position. Okay. Right. So so for this particular example, you won't see you approved. Literally approved now. And right. You won't see approved until it, if it meets that criteria. Right. Until it really is off to be posted kind of thing. Correct. Okay. Correct. And do we get email updates along the way that say, hey, your boss just approved this? Yes, you should get an email. We get email back that says they yeah. just did that. Yeah. Okay. That just, kinda... just take note. So those this will say that the requisition approved. Yeah. So this is an email that you get uh, which says the requisition approved. Uh, you would get a notification and you would always have access to going back uh, into JD Edwards uh, and seeing if your requisition has been approved or not. You could search by your requester number and it would give you a status on uh, if it's been approved or not. Awesome. And so I just went to my JDE and I don't have e-recruit yet. Is that something that's going to be rolled out? Yes, we are going to add. Uh, so we are, we have not added the roles as yet, which we are planning to do next week. Uh, so Janice, I, I believe you have a list already. Uh, I do. With, yes. Okay. So we will have we will add that to your roles by next week. That should be rolled out next week. Like, because I we have some urgent needs, and so I was waiting for this training call today. Like, is that beginning of the week, and I should still do paper, or is it end of next week, and I should do the paper on your concern. Okay. We. This will probably not go live for this group until May 7th. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll do paper then. Okay, okay. Yeah. awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. It's exciting. So everything, we have lost all paper now. So there will be no more requisition forms. There will be no more PTFs. There will be no more offer letter re request forms, everything will ha will be handled through the workflow in JDE. So Actually, Janice, one... the offer letter requests uh, would still be, uh, we have not uh, taken right. any, yes, so those those would be still be there, uh, but the requ in anything uh, concerning requisitions, those would be, um, uh, that will all be automated. And then for the offer letter, uh, we would have that built in for the next release. Uh, but this is the approval process, and similarly, if you were to create a requisition which is rejected, I can quickly go through that as well. So you would enter the same details here, and we will send you the documentations for this after the call. So 
you would put in this requisition and if you were to reject this this takes a little bit of time to get processed well, you should should get a email and then you would uh, reject you can put in the rejection reason I think it requires you to put in a rejection reason when you're rejecting uh, reject uh, and then you could put in anything in here when you would submit this you would see it has been rejected be able to see the rejection notes over here why it was rejected by the uh, by the supervisor so those those details would also be available for you to see and then if you want to make any changes uh, let's say you want to make this part-time uh, you would make this part-time, click OK, and then uh, you could click on OK, and it should reroute your approval after you make the changes to the supervisor. This is going to get submitted. You can, once it's submitted, you can close out, and I think it should should be getting okay you should get a notification that it has been rejected and then it is you the supervisor gets a notification uh, that it has been resubmitted after it, after the changes were made um, so this is uh, basically how the flow would work now I want to show you one thing that I would want uh, want to show you guys So as Janice will be assigning candidates to, uh, when she does the initial request, uh, an initial screening of the candidates when they apply for positions, you would also be able to see these candidates over here. And you would be able to click on here to see their resume, what resume has been attached. Uh, uh, um, and this is going to be all be updated by uh, Janice as she is moving these candidates to offer accepted and offer generated status uh, you would also be able to you see what what uh, the status of your current requisitions are the candidates uh, you would be able to see their resume so you would have visibility of where where each candidate is in the process um, so this is this is something that would be you guys should be able to see by going into requisition activity and you would be able to click this link and you should you should see uh, the resume for the candidate that was that was used when they applied for the position uh, so that is that is something that you guys will uh, also be able to see as requesters of requisitions uh, any other questions uh, regarding this process? Does it seem easy to everyone? It should take maybe two to three minutes to actually open a rec now as opposed to filling out a form, sending it over, getting it assigned to a recruiter, the recruiter reaching out. It's, the flow is much easier, and it's a lot faster. Oh, it's fantastic, Janice. I mean, I, sometimes I don't know if I have the current form, and, exactly. then, I'm, and then I forget who I'm supposed to email it to. So, <laughs> yeah, right. um, I, am, I am all in. Yeah, awesome. This is great. great. Thank you. It's exciting. Okay, great. Uh, good to know that. Uh, any any other questions, concerns, comments? 
so sorry. I just have to hog everybody. James, one more question. So we've been doing some reviews lately with like Mercer data. Are you familiar with that idea? Yes. <laughs> does any of this go through that level of? That's an outside process. Does that does that have something to do with when we're requisitioning? Let's say we're asking for a janitor one position, but we say, oh, we think we're going to have a salary of eighty five thousand dollars, right? And let's say that is there some sort of review of the salary we're proposing or have budgeted or replacing? No, well, actually, the Mercer's more for newer openings or um, if you just need to see what we are um, what the ranges are prior to posting. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. And so, so when we get to this point, we've kind of agreed side. with our supervisor. This is Correct. what we're looking yes. at to do. Right. Okay. Yes. Yep. I didn't want to post and then get stumped right. at the actual hire time right. that that wasn't somehow approved or reflected correctly. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thoughts? I think that wraps it up. Um, I believe, Raza, we will be sending out the training documentation. Yes, so, um, yes, we will send out the training documentation, Janice. We just need to finalize uh, that real quickly, and then okay. uh, we, it should be, uh, we sh you guys should have it by the end of day today. Very good. Okay. All right, guys, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. If you have anything that you think later, just send me an email and I'll get those answers for you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.